This box showed up at my door today. I'm pretty excited to open it up, take a look at it, test it out, and review it. Before we begin, you can check out the description below so you can find a link to everything that we talk about. And also consider subscribing if you want to watch more tech reviews just like this one. Now let's get in the review. We have a lot to get done because we're going to go through the good and the bad of an unboxing, a setup, and a coverage test all in this video. Throughout the video, I'll be referencing more detailed videos, which you can check out in the links in the description as well. In the box, I found the Amplified HD Home Wi-Fi Mesh System. It comes in premium packaging with a nice handle. After taking off the plastic wrapping, I can get to the inside portion of the package to check out the contents. They did a great job because when you open the lid, everything is right there in front of you. The only change I would have made is put the router at the bottom so it looks just like the front of the package, but now I'm getting pretty picky. There's quite a bit of detail here, even the flap on the front has a magnetic closure. Inside you'll find the main router with a protective clear plastic on it, as well as two mesh points with protective clear plastic on them. There's also a power adapter with clear plastic, well, you get the idea. Inside the black box, you'll find a white network cable and instruction manual. The router has a circle touch screen on the front, and on the back there's one port to connect to the modem, four gigabit ports for wired ethernet devices, a reserve USB port, and a USB-C port to power the device. Around the bottom you'll find a nice ring around the edge that can be lit up, a nice lip that's soft that's going to keep it from skidding, and a reset button right in the middle. The power adapter is fairly small and the cable is about 3 feet long, and the ethernet cable is also about 3 feet long. The two mesh points have a cool design. It has a base that provides power, and the mesh point antenna that attaches to the base does this via a magnetic socket. This allows the antenna to get repositioned, but also allows the antenna to get knocked off the base without the hardware breaking at the connection point. We'll take a look at this a little bit more later. My only complaint here is that I wish they would stand up on their own so it'd be easier to take a picture of, but again, I'm getting pretty picky here. All the devices have a really nice premium finish that feels soft to the touch, and that's probably why they had all that protective clear plastic on them. Setup took around 10 minutes. I used my iPhone, which seemed to go off without a hitch, to get the router up and going. The mesh points come pre-paired with the router, so all you have to do is plug them in where they can talk to the router, give them a few minutes to connect, and you're done. You can click on the link in the upper right hand corner to watch a more detailed tutorial on how to perform the setup. After the setup was complete, I updated the firmware to make sure I had the latest features. You can also find a link to see a detailed tutorial on how to update the firmware. At this point, I did run into a small issue. You can use either Facebook or Google Sign In to set up remote access to control your Wi-Fi system. Signing in worked just fine, but then the app took around 20 minutes to finally complete the process. Not a big deal, but it's a bit longer than I'd like. Once I was finished with the setup with remote access, I was able to try out the really cool beta Wi-Fi coverage tool that they just came out with. I perform other Wi-Fi reviews on this channel and often get asked advice on where people should locate their Wi-Fi equipment. This tool allows you to put in your floor plan, trace it over with different material types, and then try out your Wi-Fi devices in different locations. As you're doing this, you can choose to view the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz coverage. This tool still has some weaknesses, but it's still in beta, so we'll have to wait and see if they make any improvements. You can click on the link and check out a tutorial where I'm going to go through this in greater detail. A few general notes about the placement and setup. If you want to have a wired backhaul or more locations where you can plug in wired devices, you can also use another router as a mesh point with the system. Another thing you can do is use mesh points to perform multi-hopping to extend the range. Once I had the mesh points in place, I saw the beauty of their design. If you have them plugged in in an outlet close to the floor, in a hallway, and someone accidentally hits them, actually one of my kids knocked one off within the first hour of me setting up the system, all you have to do is put it right back on, give it a minute to reconnect, and you're good. The router itself has a touch screen that displays the time and date, data usage, IP addresses, speed, and the port statuses. I thought it looked pretty slick, and it's really nice looking design. Sorry, one more video to plug before we get to the speed and coverage test. Check out the link in the description for a detailed review of the app and all the functions such as the ISP speed test. For the speed and coverage test, we have a two-story house that also has a basement. The internet comes in in the upper left-hand corner and thus the router must be placed there. The main floor is approximately 1,300 square feet and the whole house is approximately 3,500 square feet if you include the basement. The circles shown have 10-foot radius increments. Thus, the farthest point away on the main floor is just under 60 feet. 
marked in yellow are key locations for testing. There are three on the main floor, two in the basement, and two on the second story. You can see the performance of the Linksys E2000 at the different locations of the house. This was completed using a Comcast 30 megabit per second package, and you can see that the Wi-Fi was unusable in many places in the house. Since then, we have upgraded to a 70 megabit per second service, but the Wi-Fi router in the previous test was clearly the bottleneck. Using only the amplified HD router in the corner of the house, we get much better coverage with some degradation on the second floor in the basement. Adding the additional mesh points to the system allows for us to get the full 70 megabit per second coverage throughout the entire house. I'm not convinced that we need two mesh points to cover the house, but the extra one helps provide additional coverage for the backyard. We've been testing the system out with all of our devices in our house and really haven't ran into any issues. The setup was easy and simple, placement of these was very simple, put them around in the different outlets, and we get full coverage across our house. So there's not a whole lot more to ask for there. As far as recommending it, I'd say 99.9% .9 of people are going to be very happy with this setup and all the different options that you can change in there. As far as the configurations, uh, you may want to take a look at a little bit deeper into that and see what customizations do you need and will this meet your needs. But other than that, I'm going to give this a solid recommendation and I think it's a, a solid system that's pretty easy to set up. So this has been Paul with the Amplified HD system. Thank you for watching.